Hi, this is Steve. Welcome back to Scale Model Kit Review. In this video, I continue to build the Eagle Moss Aston Martin DB5. Finally, I am on the final stage, issue 22. Now this video, I'll be looking strictly at stage 83. So, if you haven't done so already, head over to Eagle Moss and subscribe to their cars today. I'm told that the DB5 is currently sold out but you can go ahead and request an interest to purchase that kit and as many people possible request uh you know an interest they'll get it restarted i'm sure they'll go ahead and start ordering more of the the parts that that they need to put you know stocks in, within their warehouse so head over there and request an interest on this I put a link in the description below. Anyway, it's uh, I'm super excited. I've had a blast building this, and these last four stages have been a real challenge for me, but I do my best to make it easy on you. I'll make the mistakes before you do. I hope so. I, I hope that's the case. So I pointed out a lot of things in this video. Some of the stuff I did leave off is when you're neatening up your wires underneath the chassis, uh, leave some slack up front near the dash, uh, especially the wires running from your accelerator and throttle. Make sure you have some slack there that they're not too tight because they may interfere with the accelerator and the throttle. The other thing is your ignition switch. The ignition switch. It has the key in it. You might want to do something while you have everything apart you might want to do something to secure that ignition switch on the back side either with some super glue or some five minute epoxy um, so i would recommend that because you can when you're taking that uh, key in and out it could actually jar that loose and it could pop down behind the dash and you don't want to do that so i recommend you do that um, it may be a little bit late right now, but if you don't mind taking some things apart to get to it, to be able to do that, it's well worth it. Okay, so this video, uh, there's a lot of information here. It's kind of a long video. So I appreciate everybody who subscribes to my channel and everybody who's been building along with me. You've been all have been very patient uh, waiting for me to complete mine. So, it, it, what? It is completed. Ah, but you got what? We got three more videos before I finalize this. So anyway, happy modeling, everybody, and let's get started on stage eighty-three. Welcome back. Let's build the final issue for the Aston Martin DB5. It's been a long road, been a fantastic trip, been a challenge sometimes, and it's been easy sometimes also, but I've had a blast building this car, and I look forward to even more builds in the future. If you haven't done so already, look through my playlist where I have been building the Ecto-1, the Nissan GTR R35, and that will be the next one that I should complete. The Back to the Future DeLorean, the World War II Willys MB Jeep, and the newest from Eagle Moss, the Eleanor. Let's go ahead and look at the magazine. This is the final time we'll be looking at the articles found within this magazine. And uh, I know people complain about the price of these cars. And to me, it's well worth the money. I spend a lot more money just on junk. And uh, this... You'll have a magnificent showpiece to display 
in your den, in your hobby room, even up at work. So if you haven't done so already, head over to EagleMoss.com and subscribe to this today. So you can see here we have a listing of all the builds I'm currently doing, which is right there, the DeLorean, the Ecto-1, the Eleanor, and the GTR. So visit the DieCastClub.com. And you won't regret it. Now, someone told me that this is actually sold out right now. So if it is sold out, be patient. Hopefully, it will become available again for you. And hopefully, it becomes available for my friends over in Europe. So here's the table of contents. And uh, magnificent here. And just, I just can't believe I've gotten this far. So here's the listing of all the parts we received. So that we're, this is our final assembly of everything. There's a few extra items that we're going to have to assemble on this that was never called out in the instructions. And I'll point those out to you. And then, of course, uh, this video will concentrate on stage 83. And uh, we'll talk a lot about that and what's going on with that. And we'll go ahead and look at the rest of the magazine here. Here's our screw chart. And you can uh, download a copy of this on my Facebook group. I put a link in the description below. But uh, as I was saying before in a couple of other uh, parts that I built, um, stages that is, um, you know, you get the screw chart, uh, all the the different types of screws that we used for this build lastly in the last magazine so you may want to opt to uh, get all the parts first before you build this that way you have this available for you but that's probably the only other reason um, uh, and a lot of people have done that I, I've had people make comments saying hey I've got all the parts I'm ready to build and so forth so so article here is Uncomfortable Presence, Oscar-winning actor Javier Bardeen, and uh, I'm trying to see, this is from Skyfall, okay, so it looks like uh, these magazines go all the way up through to Skyfall. Oh, no, I am wrong. We uh, have Spectre. So Spectre was released uh, October 25th. 2015 in the UK on November 6th 2015 in the US running time 148 minutes worldwide box office 880.7 million dollars tagline for this are the dead are alive so I thought Spectre was pretty good I just saw the newest James Bond movie the other day I enjoyed that immensely. So, like always, great article here. Uh, lots of photographs with uh, the making of and the scenes involved here. Uh, facts about the movie also contained within these pages. So the magazine alone is worth a subscription. I mean, you're going to learn everything you want to know about Bond just with this magazine subscription. Continuing on with that, we got the article here, a little short article, Night of the Supercars, Clues from the Past, and 21st Century Gadgets. So that, that's pretty cool. Day of the Dead, uh, director Sam Mendez, uh, which had something to do with uh, Spectre also, right? Spectre means ghosts, right? So anyway, kind of reminds me of Live and Let Die a little bit here. Right there. Pretty cool. 
the old Day of the Dead celebration, uh, I think which originates in our Latin American countries, down in Mexico. Uh, so the Women of Bond is featured throughout the entire uh, subscription, and this is the last Woman of Bond, uh, Leah Sedox, and if I said that wrong, I apologize. I'm not that great on actors' names. But she uh, plays Madeline Swan. Madeline Swan. And uh, she's a beautiful young lady there. And that is it. Let me get the parts out for the first stage for issue 22. Let's get started on stage 83. Here's a parts pack for stage 83. And it looks like we received the battery box and battery box cover. So I'll go ahead and take these out and we'll get a closer look. I'll be right back. And here's a close up of those parts. Here's the battery box. And very nice indeed here. Um, i uh, probably going to go ahead and take some tulip paint that I use and cover up those contacts to make them a little bit stronger also it's going to hold it but it looks like the battery box holds three AA batteries and then here's the cover for that and it has a locked in screw already you can see there's like a little washer on that and uh, so I'm going to do that next here in a little bit so it has time to dry a little bit before I start building this stage also, before we get started, I want to go ahead and take out all the, the main body parts and frame and all that and show you what I've done to prep uh, this car before we start putting everything together. So I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. I'm going to go ahead and prep this so it has time to dry before we begin. And I'm going to be using my Tulip Slick which is black. It's a very thick acrylic paint. It's normally used on t-shirts, you know, for designing t-shirts and that, that types of thing, crafting. You can usually find this at uh, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, or even uh, Michael's. So this is just going to protect those soldered contacts and uh, make it a little bit stronger too. A lot of people use this for light blocking too for their model kits so they make the models if they put LEDs in their models like their, their uh, science fiction uh, Star Trek kits or Star Wars kits they use this to light block so it works very well and it's paintable you can paint right over the top of it there you go so that should just offer a little bit more strength to those I'm going to set this aside and let it dry. So I don't actually do anything in this stage. So like I said, I'm going to put these parts aside and we'll move on to the next stage. That will give a chance for this to dry a little bit. And plus, before I move on, I want to show you what I've done to the body and the chassis to prep for the final stages here. So I'll be right back. So let's look at the DB5 and uh, everything I've done to prep this front end of the car in order to be ready for this final uh, issue to put everything together. Okay, so that everything lines up as best as possible and uh, we ensure a good fit with everything, making sure everything is tight and ready to go. I put down uh, a towel, larger towel so it prevents me from scratching or marring the surface. This is where we got to be careful. When we go to turn this over upside down, uh, we have some very fragile areas here on the doors and especially these mirrors. Now these mirrors have been tightened down as, as much as possible and uh, they're ready to go. I taped the hood shut so it's not going to interfere with anything and when we actually go to install the front end, we got to take these overriders on the front of the bumper. We just got to we got to pull them out. Okay, they got to be out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so those overriders are pulled out now, and uh, 
Nowhere in the instructions did it say that it call out to put on the grill. And I looked back at all the uh, magazines and I didn't see nothing. Now the grill simply just uh, uh, press fits in place. And it is kind of fragile. So I'm probably going to wait till last to install this. But if you wanted, you could go ahead and install that now. So uh, I'm just going to be cautious here and I'm going to wait to install that. So what else I have done to prep this is the wiring, okay? So um, let me give you a closer look here with the wiring. That's the important part along with these overriders that had to be pulled out. So obviously I'm going to have to take all my tape off the doors here to get those out of the way because the doors need to be opened up as you throw this down on the chassis. And then obviously I'm going to have to take and unwind my wires that I taped up to just have those out of the way. But let me uh, give you a close up and I'll be right back. So for the wiring, um, I actually took and uh, put them in the channels that are provided on the top of the fender here and I super glued them. So my favorite super glue is the Loctite brand. It flows very easily and I just tapped a little bit of super glue on those to hold those wires in place. So those are prepped and ready to go. Also, with the, on the mirror mounts, I did throw some super glue on that also to keep that in place. Now for the hood, uh, a while back in a previous issue, they had you install this metal uh, bracket here. Okay, and it simply just snaps in place. I went ahead and snapped it in place, and I super glued the ends so that way it wouldn't come loose on me. And uh, just don't forget about that. I know a lot of people are asking me, what do you think about painting the inside of the hood? And I don't see a problem with doing that. You could probably even um, put a, a very uh, thin velvet type of material on that to represent the, the insulation material for underneath the hood for the James Bond car. And lastly, there's a couple things you probably want to do and I think I'm going to go ahead and do it and that's the mounts. We have four mounts. Um, two on each side and I'm going to go ahead and uh, insert the screws first. I'm going to lubricate them and pre-insert uh, pre them to get the thread started. So that way when I drop the chassis down on top uh, we're not going to have any issues there, and the threads will already be there for us. I'll be right back. So before I begin uh, screwing those screws into the uh, the mount points underneath the body here, I do want to show you something, and that is, uh, this is an RC stand for uh, RC cars. And they're pretty cheap, and you can find it on my Amazon store. Um, I do have a link below to the store, so you can uh, search through there. Then in that store, obviously, you can. Uh, I've got categories. I've got model kits, parts and accessories, paints, airbrushes, and some swag that I've. Uh, you may have seen me wear on my channel. So head over there and pick one of these up if you want. Now the reason why I'm showing this is because I'm going to use this to support the front end of the body or the back end of the body. So that way we're not putting any pressure on these uh, windshield frames, okay? And no pressure on the, the mirrors. Okay, so I'll be right back and I'll show you my setup for that. And here's my setup. I have the, the car ready to go. I have it being supported here uh, up so that way I'm not putting any pressure on those mirrors when I go to screw these screws in. And... Here's the bottom of the stand, so should be ready to go here. So I put it down. I took the tape off the doors, so now there's no pressure on anything, the mirrors or the, the door frames, when I go to screw in these screws a little tighter. Or, you know, not tighter, but get the, get the thread started on these screws. So my uh, lubrication of choice is the Vaseline and it's uh, hypoallergenic and very safe to use. There's four mount points that we have to do on here. So I'm going to lubricate all four points. And 
And the reason why I do this all along, I've been telling you, is to prevent the screws from breaking. It makes them easier to go in, in. And plus, we're using the screws to cut the threads on these mount points. They're not, they don't have threads on them already. The type of screw we're using is the A-type screw, and luckily, this last issue they do give you that screw chart that I showed you previously. Uh, if you want a copy of it now, you can download it in my Facebook group. I put a link in the description below for my Facebook group. The screwdriver I'm going to use is a Weera, and it's a number one screwdriver. Um, it's larger, but it makes it easier. So, A-type screw is going in first here. So I'm going to use it, I'm going to thread it, pre-thread everything. I'm going to screw it all the way in, and all the pressure is taken off the body. So I don't break anything. Once that's done, I'm going to take it back out. And I'm going to go ahead and do all four points, and I'll be right back. So it looks like our wiring for the front headlights runs right along here and you can see there's an opening right there. There's an opening for the wiring to go through right there to feed underneath the chassis. So that means my wiring will run along the wheel well on top here and run down the side where that mounting uh, bracket is. The, the mounting point for the body. So I'm going to make sure I uh, throw a little tape on that to keep it in place. So if you look closely you can see where I ran my wiring. Uh, it's all super glued in place. It's going to run up the side here behind the mount bracket here and I just taped it up here. I can actually remove that tape a little bit later. I did that on both sides. And the other part of prepping the front end to go down on the chassis is I tape down these struts for the hood so they don't get in the way also. Now let's look at the back end of the car. So here's the back end of the car and in preparation for installing this on the chassis I did tape some stuff in place and we're going to do the same as we did before the mounting points we're going to uh, pre-install the screws so we get the thread started. We have that ready to go. I did put uh, tape on the bulletproof item here on the trunk so that doesn't pop up on us while we're installing. And then um, I did tape down the trunk itself so that doesn't interfere with us while we are installing this. As I turn this over, I have the, the wiring looks to be good just like it is now so I just have a couple of small pieces of tape holding it in place so it doesn't get doesn't interfere back here are your mounting points so you want to make sure your wires aren't in contact with any of those mounting points let's get a closer look so right there there's your there's two mounts on each side you want to make sure your wires are tucked down behind it as I did there and they shouldn't uh, get crimped or cut when you go to install this on the chassis also this is our uh, main wire, the white, white wire. That uh, is where our on and off switch, which, which is inside of the trunk area. And I went ahead and I, I uh, uh, put some tulip slick on there to uh, just kind of strengthen up those soldering points. And it, this should be fine just like that when we go to install it. Now we probably need to move the overriders out of the way yet. I'm not sure on that, but we can we can simply just pull the overriders out and they can be out of the way while we install this on the chassis. Um, there's six mounting points here. Show you on this side. 
So we have six mounting points, one, two, and three. And that's really all that needs to be done to prep this for installing on the chassis. So let me get the chassis out and I'll show you what to do on that. So here's the chassis all ready to go. Um, obviously, you, if you watched my previous videos, I did do a lot of prepping with the wiring on this. Um, so before I turn it over though, we're going to be mounting the back end of the car to these two points right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-thread those also. And I believe they take the uh, G-type screw to hold those in. So that's what I'll be doing that. I'm not going to do it on camera. And then as I turn this over, you can see where the what I did with the wiring there. All the wiring actually ran behind the video screen. Right down there you have your video screen and all that. Um, all the wiring got ran behind that. Uh, down through by the gearbox. And running along the side. Okay. And I've got it all kind of uh, neatened up here. And should be ready to go. Everything should be out of the way. And there's a close-up of that. So there was never a call out to install the oil filler cap. And obviously that goes on the front here. Presses down in. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and glue that in place now. And I'm going to super glue it. It really doesn't need glue, but it doesn't hurt to throw just a little bit of glue on that. That way I'm not worried about it a little bit later. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed stage 83. Uh, we really didn't do any assembly. We just did some prepping of all the body parts to go onto the chassis. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for all notifications. Head over to EagleMoss.com and subscribe to this car today. I'm told it's sold out, so if it's sold out, be patient. It will be available again. Take care, everybody, and happy modeling.